board it, so we want you to oh. kind of oh, stand by the board. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> better. I better move this because it's dangerous. So. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I really enjoyed the message this morning, uh, but before I uh, share anything with you, would it be okay if I just pray? Okay. Yes. And that's how I, I start my day, reading the word and prayer, and before I ever speak, uh, uh, I pray. I'm going to pray out loud this morning. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I just, I'm thanking you, Lord, thanking you that you are who you are, and Lord, that you sent your son for us, wretches like us, Lord, like me. Lord, I come before you this morning just asking, Lord, if, just confessing to you I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm, I'm a sinner, and there are things that I do that's not right before you, words and actions. But Lord, I ask that you said in your word that if we confess our sin to you, you'll be faithful and just. Pray, Lord, you would remit all our sins, you would wash them away. So I come before you this morning to do that. And Lord, I pray right now that your covering would be upon each and every one of these teachers here. That you bless them, Lord God, that the fruits, Lord God, that they, the seed that they plant would turn out to be great fruits, and that the harvest would be great. You said the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Thank you, Lord God, that you're empowering these people who are standing here before you and sitting before you, Lord God, to share your, share your word, to plant the seed, Lord, that they will reap the rewards. But not only them, Lord, but all the children their family members and their loved ones, Lord God, to come to know you as their Savior. So I thank you for this time, and Lord, I thank you for this lesson that I got to listen to this morning. It just reminds me of all the good things that you've done for me. And Lord, I ask right now that you would just bless this gathering, bless me, give me your continued favor in all that I do, and we got to give honor to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning... Um, I love the story of Saul and Paul because it's a, I call it a, a story of transformation. You know, it was the, the greatest transformation of all times. Uh, and I, I think about Paul and Saul, he was just a zealot. He was on a path to destroy everyone who believes in Jesus. And we know that, uh, like he, the Lord got my attention one day. He got Saul's attention. Uh, and knocked him off that donkey. He was <laughs> on his way to do a lot of damage in the Damascus. But uh, uh, the Lord had a plan. And I, I'm just so thankful. As I read the scriptures, I think about all the great scriptures that Paul wrote. You know, it, you know they, they say that he wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite scriptures from the time I was six years old when I learned how to read was Philippians 4.13. Do all things in Christ who strengthens me. And so I don't know what your favorite scriptures are, but uh, that's one of mine. So this morning I want to share a few things with you about me and what I'm doing. Uh, I bring greetings to you from my bride Bessie. Uh, you know, with this June 16th, we'll be celebrating our, God willing, we make it that far, <laughs> uh, our 49th year of marriage. Uh, so I was raised here in the San Fernando Valley. Yeah, that's, that's a blessing. I have a rock star who's my, my bride, and uh, I'm just so thankful that I found the help Nick uh, at an early age. I, we started dating at 18. We got married at 20. And I loved her so much that um, I asked her to remarry. You know, can we get remarried again? We got married in a church uh, when we were 20 years old. But on our 25th, we wanted to get, you know, renew our vows again. We go to Chatsworth Four Square Gospel Church. And for the last 37 years, we've been fellowshipping there. Uh, but 35 of those years, we are the Christian education directors. And you know, all the God, God gives us all gifts. And I have two main gifts that the Lord has given me. Uh, the gift of giving and the gift of teaching. And so my bride and I have taught, uh, uh, as the Christian ed directors, oversaw all the uh, teaching programs in our church. Uh, but, you know, our gifts, uh, together we've taught couples classes for over 30 years, a uh, 12-week course, uh, and then we've also taught uh, parenting classes for 30 years. And then from there, I would transition to the children's church, which is where I get really excited. <laughs> and so I, I, I love what you're learning today is to how to inspire young people, because years ago, somebody inspired me, and I got to know Jesus. But you know what? There was a time 
when I was a teenager, I thought I knew it all. I just said, I don't want to have anything to do with this Jesus guy. You know, he's taken away all my fun. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, he got my attention, and I came back, and I've been steadfast uh, ever since. So I would go from, we would go from the adults teaching uh, until I do the song service with the kids, so I can get really silly and goofy. <laughs> uh, that, that's just me. Uh, but I would lead the song service with our children, uh, and then from there, I teach a class. One day, one Sunday could be the uh, first graders and kindergartners. Another Sunday could be third and fourth graders, uh, up to middle school. So that's kind of who I am, and that's my passion. I've been in, um, in in business in the San Fernando Valley for over 40 years, uh, and that's my our oldest son, Marcel, back there. Someone said he's my security, but you know, he's just. I'm just getting him closer to me because when I go to churches, I want him to remember all of those things that he learned as a young man and as a child. He was uh, at one time really involved in our church. Uh, he was a youth leader at our church, and then he did like I did. He kind of you know did some other stuff, and now I'm so thankful that he's joining me in the campaign. Uh, he's with me nearly everywhere I go. So uh, let me just share with you uh, how this all started, this journey, to be mayor of Los Angeles City. Uh, about nine months ago, my bride and I were sitting at our dinner table uh, eating dinner. And, and one of the best things that came out of COVID, and although there were a lot, lot of negative things, <laughs> was that we got to have meals together more frequently. As I said, I've been in business for a long time, a real estate business here in the Valley. I'm president of the Realtor Association, involved in the Chamber of Commerce, President United Chamber, all these different awards. But my, my most proudest, you know, proudest uh, time during my ministry is, as a realtor, I've been asked to give the invocation prayer. And the thing that I pride the most, aside from my, my, my relationship with the Lord, my, my family, is, is this. There was one year that I was asked to give the invocation prayer to the large realtor association here, about 300 people. Uh, and then that same 12 month period, the California Association of Realtors asked me to give the invocation prayer. Mind you, the president is of that organization gets to decide who's going to give the prayer. And it could be a minister, which I'm not. It could be a priest. It could be a rabbi. But somehow they knew the light of Christ in me. And so the, the president of the California Association of Realtors asked me to give their invocation of prayer in, in, to an audience of about 850 people. And then the same 12-month period, the president of the National Association of Realtors asked me to do the same thing, uh, to give the invocation prayer, and I did among about 2,200 people. And I always have a way of delivering the message to get people's attention, so they'll remember, but also they'll know that it's all about Jesus. So, and when you're in an audience, oftentimes you have, you know, people want you to do the politically correct thing, and to me, the politically correct thing is to acknowledge who my Savior is. So that being said, about nine months ago, my bride and I were having dinner, uh, and I was looking like a prune face. She said, what's wrong? I said, I'm upset. She said, why? I said, they've messed up my city. I grew up here. I, you know, I was raised in Pacoima. My, my bride, same thing, raised in Pacoima. I never knew my mother. I mean, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. I never knew my father. I was raised by my mother and my grandmother. Uh, and uh, Mama uh, always made sure we went to church. She worked uh, six days a week, but on Sunday, nobody worked. And we went to church. You won't be believe this, but it's true. We would walk from Pacoima to the city of San Fernando, me, my two siblings, and my mom. We'd catch the Greyhound bus to downtown LA on uh, Los Angeles Street and 6th. We'd walk a few blocks up to Broadway Street and 6th. We catch the RTD. Anybody remember the RTD? <laughs> we catch the RTD all the way down to Manchester and Broadway to go to church. That was our Sunday. And so it was a commitment on my mother to, to make sure that we were fed. And she had friends in that part of the city. She didn't have a car. And we all made that trek every Sunday. And if we were good, she'd take us to this restaurant called Clifton's, which is downtown. And we would eat. If we were really good, she'd, she'd get us dessert. So, you know. <laughs> Mom knew how to get our attention. So uh, my bride and I were just sitting around talking, and I just said, I'm really upset. And, she, and, and I said, you know, dear, I think I can solve some of these problems. And she 
threw me off my rocker. I, this young lady, she, she's kind of cautious. Uh, she has discerning spirit, and I'm so thankful that she's my helpmate. Uh, and she says to me, well, dear, I think you make an excellent mayor. And I said, the Holy Spirit hit me? What, what happened? You know, and I said, what do you mean? Are you? I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you the same girl that I've been dating for the last 50 years? <laughs> Are you the same girl that I've been married to for 48 years? She says, yes. I said, well, you know what? I'm going to call you out on this. So why? She says, well, you know, people, you understand the problems. You understand politics. But most of all, you have a heart. You have a heart for the people. And so I said, you know what, dear? We need to pray. Because I know that's where my strength comes from, the Lord. Knowing his word, but communing with him. And so we began to pray. Uh, and the prayer was really simple. It was, Lord, open the doors that should be open. Close the doors that should be closed. And give me the strength to accept whatever your answer is. I don't want to be out front. I want to be in line with where you want me to be. So we called our pastor, Jerry Moreno and Julie Moreno. They've been our pastors since 1989. Uh, and uh, we asked the pastor the same prayer, Pastor Jerry and Julie. Uh, and then we call a good friend of ours, uh, Sandy Brim, Terry Brim, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, same prayer. And then we called uh, another one of our sisters, uh, Maddie Hall, who's a prayer warrior, same prayer. And they all prayed the same thing. And Maddie had this prophetic message, you know, you know the book of Esther, when, when Mordecai, Esther, and you know that, that guy Haman, <laughs> right? you know, he, he was not up to no good. But Maddie says, Brother Mel, I'm going to pray that this is what the Lord said and what Mordecai, Mordecai said to Esther for such a time as this. The Lord has prepared you such a time as this. So uh, I call my friend Mike Antonovich, who's pretty conservative. And uh, you know, Mike and I served together for four, four, eight years on the Metro Board. I was appointed on the Metro Board by Mayor Reardon, and then four years, you know, for four years, and then years later by Mayor Antonio Viragosa. Uh, you know, Democrats, Republicans. So, uh, and I've been appointed by three different mayors you know, and Democrats, Republicans, Mayor Bradley, some of you may remember him, Mayor Reardon, Mayor uh, Rear Furigosa, and here's what they say about me. They say, Mel is honest. He has integrity. He is a hard worker. Mel's a team player. Mel gets the job done. And so we started out on this prayer tour, my, my bride and I, and doors start opening up. And although I'm what they call the lesser known candidate, you may have seen some debates. There was a debate a few months ago. Uh, and, you know, the, the caption at the end of the debate from the LA Times was that lesser known candidate se separates himself. And I say, to, oh, I mean, I'm sanctified, you know, I'm separating myself uh, from the rest of the pack. And so, you know, one of the questions was, what is the number one problem in the, here in the city? And everybody says, homelessness, homelessness. And I'm a housing guy. I've been in housing for 40 years. I have a master's degree on how to create housing that's affordable for LA and for millennials in LA. I said, no, it's, it's, it's not homelessness. It's, it's safety. You know, people don't feel safe. And you know, we need to have more police officers. We need to have mental health experts to help them because you know, people just don't feel safe in our city anymore. And so I set myself apart. I said, homelessness is a serious problem. And I'm, I'm confident that I can solve this problem. And then one of the other questions was, Mr. Wilson, uh, uh, you're the mayor. You get to, you get to make decisions on these mandates. Uh, do you, you support mandating uh, vaccinations? And I said, no. And everybody else says, absolutely yes, 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 yes. And so I said, look, I've been vaccinated myself two times. I had the booster. I said, I don't believe you should force people to do this. 
Uh, people have different reasons, different beliefs. And so, you know, I, I drew the line out. I just stand up for what I believe in. And, uh, you know, I just think that the Lord, you know, is guiding me up down the path. So let me just kind of capsulize and I'll open up for questions if you have time. Um, my, the areas of the most important